Ah, my wife Nettie called. Uh, the primo biscotti pie will be here soon. Whoo! George had to ride for three stops, but counting stops was hard if your hands were full of pie. Luckily, George was on his toes. <coughs> this was George's second bus stop. No fountain in sight. Ah. Found the Pischetti stop ah, ah, ah. and counted three. But the fountain was one stop further along. Ah. Oh, no. Mrs. Pischetti must not know how to count. George didn't have time to wait for the next bus. She had made it to 3rd Avenue. <laughs> Nettie said, find the fountain, then go three buildings to number 33. <laughs> Only the third building didn't have a 33 on it. It had a 72. No, 325. No, 22. It's a nice 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 22 degrees Celsius at 325 p.m. There was the 33 building. But it wasn't the third building. It was the fourth. George, you don't count the square from where you start. You have to count on from there. One, two, three. You see? The building you were in front of didn't count. practically at the third floor. Carrying a pie? Is it a brown monkey? Well, I think he just came through the window. The chef's down there, honey. Find the men's room and go three doors. Ah! Now George knew just what to do. The door where George started wouldn't count. I don't think I overstate the matter when I say timing is everything. Ah. Yeah. Oh, as I promised, the pie! <laughs> so, this is a biscotti pie. Light, fluffy, a confectionery delight. George hoped he'd get a slice. Delivering pie really worked up a monkey's appetite. <gasps> when you order from Piscetis, we guarantee your pie in the face gag will never fall flat. <laughs> now, how many orders do I have? Huh? Thanks to you, my new clown food supply franchise is off to a roaring start. <laughs> now that's unique!
Sue Burm grabbed a sponge. She must have wanted to clean off what George did. Watch how she uses the sponge, George. Sharky was ready for more playtime. <laughs> Mr. Glass would not be happy about this. George asked Sue Burm to make an exact copy of the damaged painting. <laughs> Maybe he could copy it himself, if he used the same paint she did. Wiggle was much thicker in Sue Berm's painting. Was it because she was bigger? Or was it because she used a bigger brush? George needed to paint a lavender blob. But he had no lavender paint. find the combination of colors that would make lavender. <laughs> White turned the color lighter. hoped he could get to the glass tower before Mr. Glass. Uh, oh, uh, hi, George. Hey, that's my unique painting, and another one just like it? There are two. And that's not unique. There cannot be two. Every Sue Burm painting is different. And why isn't it in my lobby, where I left it? Monkey! <laughs> hmm. They're almost identical, but this one has Subram's nose print. Uh -oh. The ripped one is the original. Monkey! Hold on. George, did you make this copy because that one ripped? It's almost perfect! You're a good painter, George! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. A painting monkey? A painting elephant? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, of course not. Because what I'm thinking is... Unique! that anywhere else in the whole world there's an elephant and a monkey painting in a lobby. Well, I'd say your lobby is unique. Yes, exactly. And you know the best part. <laughs> they work for peanuts! <laughs> <laughs> What's this? A foot race? Mm-hmm. We're trying to raise money for an expedition to the lost city of Omam. The next day, George couldn't wait to start training. Hey! Well, wait up! I need help! 
This was strange. The professor who said she couldn't run was running. <gasps> Terrible, absolute disaster. What, did the T-Rex collapse? <sighs> oh, worse. Anonymous donors. They won't contribute to the expedition unless I run the race. No, but that's great. Races are a lot of fun. Can you help me train? I don't know a thing about running. No problem. Let's meet in the park at lunchtime tomorrow. <coughs> no, Charky, look out! <coughs> <coughs> oh, oh. Oh. <sighs> oh, boy. What? He sprained his ankle? How can I train for the race without him? <coughs> You want to be my personal trainer? <laughs> uh, George, wait up. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> well, don't give up. I think it's a great idea and I found something that might help. It's an old training video I used to watch called Run For Your Life. You, yeah, you, are you ready to run like you mean it? <laughs> uh, you might want to take notes. <laughs> Graceful, you gotta stretch those muscles. <laughs> Time to run? Oh, but not too fast, right? <laughs> All right, then. Let's go. <sighs> oh, is this a Ferris wheel? <laughs> okay. I've never been on one of these before. <laughs> The professor had so much fun on the Ferris wheel that George took her to all his favorite places. <laughs> the day the professor outran him, George knew she was ready for the race. <laughs> on race day, George couldn't believe how many people showed up. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, no! I forgot my water. <laughs> oh, thanks. The race was on. The professor seemed to be doing everything right. She ran at a steady pace. Do you see her? I don't see her. <laughs> she looks tired. <laughs> That's a cramp in your leg, George, and they can be very painful. Ooh. Ooh. Hi there. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun if my personal trainer finished the race with me. for finishing, and the race was a huge success. We raised enough money for our trip to Omam. Oh, that's terrific. And I found out who those anonymous okay. donors were. Yeah. Apparently, they thought I needed to work a little less and have fun a little more. That's right, because all work and no play is a crummy way to spend your day. <laughs> to thank you for helping me learn that lesson, I want you to have my medal. Oh. <laughs> George was feeling pretty proud. He had been made an honorary county sprout. And today was his first sprout outing. Exciting stuff, huh, George? <laughs> it's my first outing, too, as the new Sprout Master. And let me compliment my assistant Sprout Master, B. 
Bill. Yeah! Oh, Bill. Bill. oh, yeah! Reporting for duty, Sprout Master, sir. Oh, I lost the map! Whoa! Whoa. Ah. Welcome to the Incredible Edible Arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. It looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one, never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um, no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster? We're going to pass through orchards and nut groves. I wouldn't go that way if I were you. After that, we'll meet the head gardener, Dr. Greenbean. <laughs> According to my new global positioning system, the apple orchard is that way. Um, why don't we check the map? Where is the map? It flew out the window, sir. But this is even better. <laughs> if there was one thing George did not want to do, it was break any more branches. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> In this direction, green. In this direction, a path. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. No. Hey, are you a monkey? George had to do something and fast. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. <laughs> You know, this is fun and all, but I have to get back to work. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. We're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First, this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches, and you thought he was hurting the tree. Ah, <laughs> oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, oh, you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. <laughs> He's right, George. I've pruned many a tree in my day. You see, George, too many branches are bad news. They block the sun, and then the fruit can't grow. Oh. <laughs> But hey, I'm proud of you, George. You behaved just like an honorary sprout. In fact, I would say your effort on behalf of trees qualifies you for full sprout status. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster? According to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. I'd sure like to win a ribbon, George. Buy this kit, I had to save nine weeks of money for my paper route. Oh, I almost forgot to do my paper route. Could you do me a big favor and watch my boat while I'm gone? <laughs> Come. 
Commanding a ferry had been George's lifelong dream. Maybe he just put it down the wrong way. Hey, George, how's it going? I'll be back after I deliver the rest of these papers. Thanks for taking good care of my boat. <laughs> First, George had to find out what boats were made of. If you've got to build a boat in a hurry, a bucket of toys is a handy thing to have. Jumpy Squirrel's new favorite thing to do was watch George sink boats. <laughs> At last, George had something he knew would float. Bill wasn't going to win any contest with a tiny board. <laughs> no! <laughs> and this is what he had to work with. Maybe it was time to study boats in action. Wide boats seem to work well. Steam coming out. A propeller. And a good solid bottom. Okay, a wide boat with steam coming out and a propeller. All done! I'm just gonna drop my bike at home. Would you mind watching my boat for a few more minutes? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching my boat. Where is my boat? George! You built this yourself? Where'd you say my boat was? <laughs> Holy cow! You did me a real favor, George. <laughs> I forgot to close the windows. Thanks for showing me. I would have really been sunk if it happened in the contest. <laughs> Model boating requires utmost attention to tiny details. And keeping the water out. <laughs> Come on, let's go enter. Hey, you gotta bring your boat to enter it. <laughs> sure, who else has a boat like that? Let's hear it for our winners! Congratulations, George. I didn't even know you built a boat. I convinced him to enter it. And did you see this? It says best boat by a monkey. <laughs> That's funny. They must have run out of regular ribbons. I'll take care of this. I'll ask him to make you one that says best boat by a city kid. Uh, Hunley, you're in charge. <laughs> a monkey on wheels looked wrong, but a proud, sleek dachshund on nice wheels. George knew exactly what Hunley wanted to do. 
The only thing in the world Hunley wanted was to stop rolling. Now the only thing in the world he wanted was for these nice girls to take the wheel shoes off him. But unfortunately, the girls didn't speak Dachshun. I think he's sad because we messed up his ride. Don't worry, doggy. We'll get you rolling again. Ready? One, two, three! <laughs> could think of nothing worse than skating down the sidewalk out of control with a cat on his back. Until... Whoa! That cat's skateboard is, like, made of dog! Milky realized that when the boy leaned, he could steer. So maybe she should try it. George thought he recognized that flying dog. But it couldn't be Hunley. Hunley wouldn't fly. Then again, how many skating, flying, wiener dog and cat teams could there be in the city? George thought this was a good time to show Hunley how to stop. No matter what George did, they kept going faster and faster. <laughs> he couldn't imagine how they were ever going to stop. <laughs> then he could. Hanley, I've been worried. Where have you? You are a muddy mess. Ooh. Looks like he's not the only one. We can't have the tenants see us like this, Hundley. I'll get a towel and get you cleaned up, boy. Time for you to clean up too, George. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. George? Hunley was sure if that monkey and cat hadn't been around, he could have learned to skate. Say, weren't there two pairs of skates? Must have been my imagination. George couldn't wait to meet a real penguin. Oh, this is great! Okay. You'll meet us at this spot at 9 a.m., right? Right. Remember, if you get lost, use the outpost beacon to find your way back. Don't worry. If we get lost, we can always find an igloo for shelter. <laughs> no, you can't. Igloos are found in the Arctic. 
Not in the Antarctic. Heck, this side of the outpost for the penguins. <laughs> okay, but don't go too far, George. If you see penguins, call me using the radio mic. Like this. Oh, it's gonna be a great day. Hi, uh, <clears throat> um, I found a penguin. Well, it found me, but it's not a chin strap. I think it's an Adelie penguin. George had found one of the chinstrap penguin family. George was so excited, he forgot to call the man with the yellow hat. He also forgot to look where he was going. The camera was waterproof. Now George wished it would stay in one place. George, where are you? Okay, I'm coming. I I'll find you. protection than this. Hmm. <gasps> ah! <sighs> All we can do now is wait out the storm. <laughs> there, George. <laughs> hey, the blizzard's over. George had the camera back, he could get the pictures Professor Wiseman needed. Ooh. Look, their nest! You found their breeding island. That's why we didn't see them earlier this year. Amazing work. How did you find them? We'll do it the same way every time we come. Well, first, have a monkey drop the camera in the water. <laughs> Back in the city, George couldn't stop thinking about his carrots. <laughs> Finally, after what felt like 66 days, because it was, <laughs> George had three full-grown carrots. Those look ready to pull, George. <laughs> George 
George wished he hadn't bitten this one when it was small. Wow, that's a perfect carrot. George showed his carrot to Mrs. Rankins. Now, this looks like a prize winner. Let's find out if it tastes as good as it looks, huh? I'll go get a knife. <laughs> George needed something he could put the carrot in for safekeeping. George, Bill's not here. His bunnies got loose two days ago and he hasn't been able to find them. Ah! If you see them, tell Bill right away. They won't stay in one place for very long. <laughs> Brownie, Spotty, Herbert, Neninger, Black Ears. Those looked like bunny tracks. <laughs> George found them. They were cold, afraid, and very hungry. He had to tell Bill. But bunnies won't stay in one place. What if they weren't here when he got back? He couldn't carry them all. But he could carry them home in this. But it wasn't a five bunny case. They needed to eat. And if they were eating, they might stay put. But it wasn't going to be easy to part with his carrot. This was the hardest decision he ever had to make. Um, uh, uh. But it was for bunnies. <laughs> he had to get Bill before they finished eating. Carrot was gone, but it was a carroty hero. Huh? <gasps> huh. Something new is growing. Maybe a bird dropped some seeds there. Um, if it's more carrots, can we eat one this time? Uh -huh. 